October 25, 1944, off the coast of Samar Island in the Philippines, a Japanese lookout aboard the heavy cruiser Kumano raises his binoculars and freezes. On the horizon, he sees something that shouldn't be possible. Massive water columns erupting from the ocean. Not close, not nearby, miles away, kilometers away. Giant towers of seawater rising hundreds of feet into the air, each one marking where a shell weighing as much as a small car has just impacted the ocean. The lookout calculates the distance in his head. Fifteen kilometers. Maybe more? No ship's guns can reach that far. It's physically impossible. Naval guns fire in arcs. The shells rise, then fall. At extreme range, they lose accuracy, lose power, become useless. Every navy in the world knows this. Maximum effective range for battleship guns is maybe 12 kilometers. Beyond that, you're wasting ammunition. But these shells are coming from farther away, much farther away, and they're not random. They're walking closer. One salvo falls 200 meters short. The next salvo lands 100 meters closer. They're ranging shots. Someone out there beyond the horizon, beyond visual range, is systematically adjusting their aim and whoever is firing knows exactly what they're doing. The lookout grabs the ship's intercom and screams a warning to the bridge, but even as he does, he knows it's already too late. Because the next salvo won't miss, this is the story of the Iowa's 16-inch guns, the naval weapons that redefined what was possible in warfare, the guns that could hit targets so far away the enemy couldn't even see the ship firing at them. The guns that terrified the Japanese Navy because they broke every rule of naval combat. This is the story of range, of physics pushed to its absolute limit, of engineering that turned a battleship into a weapon that could reach out and destroy you from beyond the horizon. The USS Iowa, designated BB-61, was commissioned in February 1943. She was the lead ship of the Iowa-class battleships the last class of battleships ever built by the United States Navy, and she was designed with one primary mission, speed and firepower. The Iowa was 887 feet long, displaced 45,000 tons when empty, and nearly 58,000 tons fully loaded. But unlike previous American battleships, which prioritized armor over speed, the Iowa class was built to chase down and destroy fast enemy ships. Her engines could push her to 33 knots, making her one of the fastest battleships ever built. That speed came with a cost. The Iowa's armor was thinner than older battleships. But the designers had calculated that speed itself was a form of defense. A moving target was harder to hit, and the Iowa wasn't built to sit still and absorb punishment. She was built to move, to hunt, to project power across vast distances, but speed meant nothing without firepower. And the Iowa's primary weapons were nine 16-inch Mark VII naval rifles, mounted in three triple turrets, two turrets forward, one aft. Each gun was 66 feet long and weighed over 100 tons. The barrel alone was 50 feet of rifled steel designed to withstand pressures that would destroy any ordinary gun. These weren't just large guns. They were masterpieces of engineering, built to tolerances measured in thousandths of an inch, designed to fire a 2,700-pound armor-piercing shell over 23 miles. 23 miles. That number needs to be understood. In 1944, most battleships could accurately hit targets at maybe 12 to 15 miles. The Iowa could reach targets half again as far. And that difference was everything. The 16-inch armor-piercing projectile was designated the Mark VIII. It weighed 2,700 pounds. That's over a ton. It was 5 feet long and 16 inches in diameter. The front two-thirds of the shell was solid forged steel, hardened to penetrate the armor of enemy battleships. The rear third contained approximately 40 pounds of high explosive enough to devastate everything inside an enemy ship once the shell had punched through the armor. But the Mark VIII wasn't just heavy, it was precisely engineered. The shell was ballistically optimized with a pointed nose and carefully calculated weight distribution. When fired, it would spin from the rifling in the barrel at about 20 revolutions per second, stabilizing its flight. 
and it was fired with a muzzle velocity of 2,500 feet per second. That's about 1,700 miles per hour as it left the barrel. For comparison, modern commercial jets cruise at about 550 miles per hour. The shell was traveling three times faster than a passenger plane. At that velocity, the shell's kinetic energy was enormous. Even without the explosive charge, the impact alone could penetrate over 18 inches of hardened steel armor plate. With the explosive charge, it could punch through an enemy battleship's belt armor, travel through multiple internal compartments, and then detonate deep inside the ship, where it would cause catastrophic damage to engines, magazines, or crew spaces. Japanese naval architects had designed their battleships to withstand hits from 14-inch shells, maybe even 16-inch shells at normal combat ranges. But they had never anticipated being hit by 16-inch shells, fired from 20 miles away, with the full kinetic energy preserved because the shell was arriving at such a high angle and velocity. How did the Iowa's guns achieve 23-mile range when other battleships topped out at 15? The answer was physics, engineering, and innovation combined. First, the Mark 7 16-inch gun had an exceptionally long barrel. Most battleship guns had barrel lengths of about 45 calibers. The Iowa's Mark 7 had a barrel length of 50 calibers. A caliber in this context means the barrel length compared to the bore diameter. 50 calibers meant the barrel was 50 times 16 inches, or about 66 feet long. That extra barrel length meant more time for the explosive charge to accelerate the shell before it left the muzzle. More acceleration meant higher velocity. Higher velocity meant longer range. Second, the Iowa used specially designed propellant charges. Six individual silk bags of smokeless powder were loaded behind each shell. When ignited, they produced enormous pressure, about 40,000 pounds per square inch, driving the shell down the barrel. The powder composition was optimized for maximum energy output while minimizing barrel wear. Third, the shells themselves were designed with perfect ballistic profiles. The pointed nose and carefully shaped body reduced air resistance during flight. Every surface was machined to exact specifications to ensure consistent performance. Fourth, the gun elevation system could raise the barrels to 45 degrees, nearly halfway to vertical. At that angle, the shell would arc high into the atmosphere where air resistance was lower, travel in a ballistic parabola, and then descend onto the target from above. This high angle fire not only increased range, but also meant the shells were falling nearly vertically onto enemy ships, striking the weakly armored top decks rather than the heavily armored belt. Range meant nothing without accuracy. A shell that could travel 23 miles was useless if you couldn't hit anything. The Iowa's fire control system was one of the most sophisticated technological achievements of World War II. It started with the Mark 38 director, a massive armored structure mounted high on the ship containing rangefinders, radar, and ballistic computers. The rangefinders used optics to measure the distance to the target. But in 1944, the Iowa had something revolutionary, radar. The Mark 8 fire control radar could detect enemy ships beyond visual range and provide accurate ranging data even in darkness, fog, or rain. The system could track targets and calculate their course and speed. Then came the ballistic computer. The Mark 8 rangekeeper was a mechanical analog computer that took data from the radar and rangefinders, combined it with information about wind speed, air temperature, air pressure, the ship's own motion, the Earth's rotation, and dozens of other variables, and calculated the precise elevation and direction each gun needed to be aimed to hit the target. It did this continuously, updating the solution multiple times per second. The computer would send electrical signals to the turrets, and the guns would automatically adjust their aim. The gun crews didn't aim the weapons manually. They loaded the shells and powder charges, then stepped back. The computer aimed and fired. This was crucial because manual aiming at extreme range was impossible. The target was beyond the horizon. Human gunners couldn't even see what they were shooting at. 
Only the radar and computer could make the shot possible. The Battle of Leyte Gulf in October 1944 was the largest naval battle in history. The Japanese Navy made a desperate attempt to destroy the American invasion fleet at Leyte. One Japanese force, including the super battleships Yamato and Musashi, approached from the west. American submarines and aircraft attacked them. Musashi was sunk. But Yamato and other ships broke through and headed for the vulnerable American transports. All that stood between them and the invasion fleet was a small force of escort carriers and destroyers. The escort carriers launched aircraft, but they had no armor-piercing bombs capable of seriously damaging battleships. The destroyers charged in for desperate torpedo attacks. It looked like a massacre was about to happen. And then the Iowa and her sister ships arrived. The Japanese commanders aboard Yamato saw the distinctive profiles of American fast battleships on the horizon, and they made a decision that probably saved their lives. They turned away. They retreated. Why? Because they knew what those ships could do. The Iowa-class battleships had already earned a reputation. In previous engagements, they had demonstrated their range. Japanese ships had been hit from distances the Japanese didn't think were possible. Admiral Kurita, commanding the Japanese force, calculated that if he closed to engagement range with the Iowa-class ships, he would be under fire for at least 30 minutes before his own ships could reply. 30 minutes of taking hits from 16-inch guns without being able to shoot back. His ships might survive, but they would be damaged. And damaged ships couldn't complete the mission. So he withdrew. The Iowa's reputation alone had changed the course of the battle. Imagine being a Japanese sailor aboard a cruiser or battleship in 1944. You're at battle stations. You know American ships are somewhere in the area. And then, without warning, without seeing anything, massive explosions erupt in the water around your ship. Shells weighing over a ton are falling from the sky like artillery. But these aren't being fired from land. They're coming from a ship. A ship you can't see. Your lookouts scan the horizon with binoculars. Nothing. The ship firing at you is beyond visual range. And the shells keep coming. The first salvo was short. The second was over. Now they have you bracketed. The next salvo will hit. Your ship's captain orders full speed and begins evasive maneuvers, zigzagging desperately. But it takes time to change course. Your ship is huge and slow to respond. And meanwhile, the enemy, whoever they are, wherever they are, is adjusting their aim with each salvo. Then the hits come. A 16-inch shell strikes your ship's forward turret. The shell weighs as much as a car and is traveling faster than the speed of sound. It punches through eight inches of armor plate like it's cardboard. The shell continues through the turret, through the deck below, through another deck, and finally detonates deep inside the ship. The 40 pounds of high explosive creates a pressure wave that kills everyone in a 50-foot radius instantly. The explosion ruptures fuel lines and starts fires. Fragments tear through bulkheads. Your ship shudders from the impact. Damage reports start flooding into the bridge. And another salvo is already in the air. The Iowa's guns weren't just for naval combat. In February 1945, Iowa participated in the pre-invasion bombardment of Iwo Jima. For three days before the Marines landed, Iowa and other battleships pounded the island. The 16-inch guns fired high-explosive shells at Japanese fortifications. These shells were different from the armor-piercing rounds. High-explosive shells had thinner walls and carried over 150 pounds of explosive. When they detonated, they created blast waves that could collapse bunkers and kill everyone inside from overpressure even if the structure didn't collapse. Iowa fired hundreds of shells at Iwo Jima. The guns could hit specific targets, pillboxes, bunkers, artillery positions from miles offshore. Forward observers with the Marines would call in coordinates and minutes later, shells would obliterate the target. The Japanese defenders had never experienced anything like it. They had built fortifications designed to withstand regular artillery. But 16-inch naval rifles weren't regular artillery. They were siege weapons. A single hit from a 16-inch shell 
could destroy a reinforced concrete bunker that would take dozens of smaller artillery shells to crack. The Japanese garrison on Iwo Jima was well prepared and well supplied. They had weeks to dig in. They had created a defensive network of tunnels, caves, and bunkers. They intended to make the Americans pay for every yard of ground. And they did. The battle for Iwo Jima cost thousands of American casualties. But without the naval gunfire support from ships like the Iowa, casualties would have been far worse. The 16-inch guns suppressed Japanese artillery that would have slaughtered Marines on the beaches. They destroyed strong points that could have held up the advance for days. The Iowa's 16-inch guns represented a peak in battleship technology, but they also represented the end of an era. The battleship as a concept was already obsolete by 1944. Aircraft carriers had replaced battleships as the primary capital ships. Carrier-based aircraft could strike targets hundreds of miles away, far beyond the range of any gun. The Iowa and her sisters were the last generation of battleships ever built. After World War II, no nation built new battleships. The missile age was beginning. Guided missiles could hit targets from hundreds of miles away with perfect accuracy. No gun could match that. But during World War II, especially in the Pacific, the Iowa-class battleships filled a unique role. They were fast enough to escort carriers. They had enough anti-aircraft guns to help defend against kamikaze attacks. And when you needed to destroy something 20 miles away, nothing else could do it. The 16-inch guns stayed in service long after World War II ended. Iowa was reactivated during the Korean War, Vietnam War, and even in the 1980s during the Reagan administration. In 1991, during the Gulf War, the battleship Missouri, Iowa's sister ship, fired 16-inch shells at Iraqi positions. Those shells, fired from guns designed in the 1930s, were still effective 50 years later. The Iowa class were finally decommissioned for good in the 1990s. No battleships remain in active service anywhere in the world. The era of the battleship is over. But the Iowa and her sisters represent the absolute peak of that era. The most powerful, most capable battleships ever built. Ships that could reach out 23 miles and destroy anything they could see. And quite a lot they couldn't. Today, the USS Iowa is a museum ship in Los Angeles. You can walk her decks. You can stand next to the 16-inch guns and try to comprehend their scale. Each barrel is five stories tall when elevated. Each shell weighed more than most cars. The gun turrets, each containing three guns, weigh over 1,700 tons. That's the weight of a modern destroyer, just the turret. The mechanisms to load, aim, and fire these weapons are mechanical marvels. Hydraulic rams lift the shells from the magazines deep in the ship. Loading systems carefully position the shells and powder charges. The guns elevate with electric motors, powerful enough to lift the massive barrels to 45 degrees. All of this happened while the ship was moving, rolling in waves, sometimes during combat, with the ship shaking from hits and near misses. The crews trained constantly to operate these systems under pressure. They could fire a full salvo of nine shells every 30 seconds. That's nine tons of steel and explosive hurled 20 miles every half minute. The Japanese Navy feared the Iowa's guns because they represented a fundamental shift in naval warfare. For the first time, one ship could dominate an area of ocean over 40 miles in diameter. Anything within that circle could be destroyed before it could reply. The Japanese had designed their ships to fight at 10 to 15 mile range. The Iowa redefined engagement ranges. She forced changes in tactics, in strategy, in ship design. The 16-inch guns of the Iowa-class battleships were the most powerful naval weapons in human history. And ships like the Iowa proved that sometimes the biggest gun wins.